heal the world, make this a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. There are people dying, but if you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Hello everybody, I'm Cheryl Talley Moss and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this episode, I'm going to take you on the tour of my food forest. Okay, let's get started. So right here is a methylene plum. I think next year is going to be the year that we're going to get fruit from it. It is about 10 feet tall. I pruned it to six feet during the summer. Pardon me, fall and winter. And right here is my junk area of the food forest. Those are my rain barrels that I have upside down. Paid a lot of money for them. They cracked at the spigots and I need to have somebody to fix them. And that's the old, old shed there that I put stuff in that I really don't care about. So anyway, I'm going to, I guess... That's the greenhouse right there. I think I'm going to go around this way first and show you. Here is a Yates persimmon tree. It's a year old. Um, it's growing like crazy. It flushes with new leaves. And what happens is, this is just wind damage. And what happens is, it'll turn green as the leaves get older. But they're very pretty. Yates persimmon, uh, it's a non-astringent type. Right here is my mint tea garden bed mint has gone crazy a month ago i harvested a whole lot i really don't care about it going crazy i eat or drink a lot of mint and right in the center of it are texas star hibiscus they're growing up they have deep roots so they're really compatible this is a uh cement block uh, bed garden bed and i really don't care about the mint going crazy i'm going to harvest a lot more and dehydrate it and put them in really cute jars for christmas okay so now i'm going to move three on. pawpaw trees this is the second summer with these pawpaw trees they have to be shaded the first three years uh, they're growing very well. This one is a sunflower. I'm going to put the names of the other two because I don't want to get them confused. This is not insect damage. This is wind damage here. But they're growing in a container. And where I wanted to put them is where the grapes, the Thompson seedless grapes, um, that I told you guys about about in a, on Tuesday's fruit. Those vines won't die. But if they grow, I'm just going to let them go wild and I'll find another place where I'm going to put these three pawpaws trees. So we have a sunflower right here. I can kind of look down, bend down and look here. Here is the Pennsylvania golden pawpaw. It's the smallest of the three. And here is the SAA Overlease. And I think it's probably the biggest of the three. Okay? And by the way, all of these trees came from, these three pawpaw trees came from Stark Brothers. And as the weeks come when I do Tuesday's Fruit, I'll tell you more and more, more about pawpaw trees if you're not familiar with them. Right here is... Uh, golden delicious apple tree. I don't know if you can. It's so tight in here. And there's one in the ground there as well. And then on the other side, you can see way up in the air there, about 10 feet high. That is a methany plum as well. Like the one over there behind the greenhouse in that blue container right there. Now I'm going to back back. So, so far I've shown you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees. Now I'm going to back up 
and show you my Utah Gold pomegranate tree. And you can look at the beautiful blooms on it. And I've lost some of the blooms because you can look down here on the ground and you can see the beginning of fruit that I lost, but that happens with the wind. And there's a lot right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in close. You see all those little orange petals and pieces of the beginning of fruit all down there. The high winds in Texas. And if you haven't noticed yet, you will see no grass in my backyard. And you'll see that some of the wood chips are piled a little bit higher than they should be. And that's because I've been taking my time and trying to shovel them. And I sent a video to two landscaping companies and they haven't gotten back with me. But that could be because of the virus. So this is the Utah Gold Sweet Pomegranate Tree. And what's so unique about, this is what the beginning of the fruit looks like. Let me get it. See right there? It'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And the fruit is going to be gold on the outside, a tinge of red blush color. And on the inside, it's a light pink uh, fruit with a lot of juicy seeds, and it's very delicious. And this tree extends all the way from here and go up and then go around, let you see how far. So eventually, these one, two, three, four, five, six trees will be moved from here. Wow, that was the biggest uh, black bumblebee I've ever, ever seen. So yeah, all of this will be an area to walk in. I'm using the established trees as a shading um, device or tree for the ones that I need to shade. And back right here... Believe it or not, this is a dwarf tree. This is the gala apple tree that started blooming in January and flowered in February. And what you're looking at are these C9 and C7 Christmas tree lights on here. And this is what I use to save the fruit on the tree. If you can look right there, let me see, pull it down. See, like, see the fruit? Beautiful. Some of the fruit is damaged uh, because it's frost bitten, but it has a lot of fruit and will be okay. Now I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna show you the tree that I named after Leia Farmer, 73, and let you see that the lighter color leaves in this, the Fuyu persimmon tree, this is all new growth within the last month. The more established leaves are dark yellow and you can see fruit. And I was watching Lead Farmer 73 channel and um, about two years, maybe three years now, and I had put out a plea and I want you to see all the fruit on the ground. All the little brown things that you see like this, that's fruit that has dropped. But it doesn't matter because there's a lot of fruit still on this gorgeous, gorgeous tree. Let me, I just love the way this tree look. I lo it reminds me of something Asian. And it is an Asian tree. But just the shape of it is just so beautiful. Um, this tree doesn't need any fertilizer. I only give it a little comfrey tea once a year. Full you persimmons. Uh, has a large, long tap root, and it goes deep in the soil, and it gets the nutrients that are deep in the soil to feed it. So you don't have to use any type of fertilizer. But like I said, every year I give it a little comfrey tea. It's beautiful. As I was saying, I put out a plea for anybody on YouTube to help me figure out why all of my fruit died, dropped, or was eaten by squirrels, I really didn't know. And Lead Farmer made a video and he helped me out and he explained to me that I had just uh, bought the tree and had moved it and, you know, put it in the ground and it was establishing new roots and getting used to the new environment and that's why it lost its fruit. It'll drop its fruit if, it's, if it can't handle it. So this year it put on so much fruit, it couldn't handle it, so it aborts it. 
And last year, it did the same thing, but not as much fruit as we have this year on it, but only six pieces of fruit uh, survived. So I'm thinking that we're going to get much more fruit this year. And I always say this, I'm happy and grateful and thankful for any amount of fruit that I get. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now we're moving along. And I want you to see, and I'm just going to quickly show you the Concord grapes up against the shed that's going crazy that I tried to kill, but I couldn't kill. And here is a apple tree. I'll put the names in them when I go take the video in to edit it. But it has a few pieces of fruit on it. And this is only the second year with this tree. So I'm happy. Right over here is my comfrey. And you can see right there where I hacked all of that down a few days ago. And I'm going to slowly turn so that you can see the fertilizer that I'm making in those three pails right in front of the gala apple tree. And so that comfrey is my main source of fertilizer for my garden. And here is another apple tree. I think it's called a Kinder Crisp. If I'm wrong, I will correct myself. But I want you to see that the fruit is on this tree. And this tree, guys, is not even a year old. But I bought a Supreme tree from Stark Brothers, meaning that it had a 7 8 inch uh, girth on the bark. So I paid a little bit more for this one and it's growing in a pot. And what I do for the first two, three years is I put my trees, can you see all of that guys? All of that fruit, look over here, five. And I may have to have to, I may have to thin some of this fruit out. I'm gonna do more research cause I don't wanna put too much weight on it than it can handle. Now, another pile of wood chips right here. As you can see, I've cleared a path all the way through here. But before I go over there, I want to share with you that these plants right here receded themselves from one plant. This is milkweed. This is the plant, and it's getting ready to flower, that attracts the monarch butterfly. And right here is echinacea, and some people call it cone flowers. And I had two flowers, two little small plants that I grew from seed, and they reseeded themselves this year. And in the early spring, I saw them coming back. And you can see it's quite a few of them. This whole flower bed, and it also has some dianthus and the uh, uh, common name, the little red pink flowers, that, that's Sweet William. And that's been there for a couple of years. And this was a garden bed. And I just built the chips, the wood chips up about eight inches and covered up the bed. Because I knew that the wood chips would bring fertilizer to the plants. Now, I'm going to move on. And I'm going to go back over here. And I'm trying not to go so fast. And I'm going to go to the edge of the fence so that I can share with you what's in that corner. Now, the first tree that you see right here, that's a pecan tree. I think it's about three years old, maybe two. A squirrel put a pecan in a container, in a citrus tree container that I brought in the house for the winter. And I just kept watching it and I just saw this branch coming out of the citrus tree. And it looked different. So one day, I uh, did a little digging around in it and carefully removed the seedling and it had a pecan attached to the end of it. And I made a video and it's on YouTube in my catalog. And I've been growing this tree ever since because I put it in the ground. Now I'm gonna move over here so that you can see closer. See it in the ground? Very strong. And here are some sunflowers. We had rain for the last two days, but I need to get some water over there in that container. And here you see more comfrey, 
more milkweed that reseeded. This is borage that reseeded milkweed. And here are my sugar baby watermelons. Okay. And then here we have more flowers. And here we have, remember that parsley, guys? I told you that I was getting ready to let go to see because it's a very good um, variety that uh, grew for an entire year. Um, I'm going to be collecting some of these brown seeds tomorrow. Right here, this is, I believe, Santa Rosa Plum. Yes, yeah, Santa Rosa Plum from Stark Brothers. I thought I was going to have to move it because it was just a little stick. I think I got it on sale for like $9.99 in the summertime, which is the wrong time of year to be planting a plum tree down here. And then you see some um, comfrey growing around it. And I'm just going to let it do it. And I'll just remove the leaves and chop and drop it. And this is looking a little yellow. So I may give it a little fish emulsion and seaweed. Okay? Because sometimes you have to feed the tree even if you do have wood chips around it. Now I'm going to move over here. And I've showed you guys a lot of this the other day on Tuesday's fruit. This is my Concord grapes. They will be two years old in the fall. And they're on two arbors. And they're just really loaded with fruit. And I'm not going to waste a lot of time sharing that with you. Um, because you've seen it in a recent video. But I just wanted you guys that are new to my channel. And for those of you that have been following me a while. You know when I uh, planted these three vines. They are just doing wonderful. A little yellowing of the leaves. But that's okay because we have been getting a lot of water. But... I am hoping to make, um, to harvest enough grapes. And that's one vine over there, one vine over here, and the third vine is right there. And I'm hoping to harvest enough grapes so that I can make jelly, wine. Can you see that? Yes. And some grape juice for my grand angels. Now, over here are noble muscadines. It's only two um, plants and they are loaded. There are muscadines all over. This is actually a bench. Let me move this out the way here. This little bench where you sit there, but it has overgrown, uh, has been overgrown or taken over with the muscadines. And I mean, it's plenty of it in here, you all, except that it's just that it takes a little bit longer for these to mature. These will start getting ripe in about August. And next to it is my, let me show you right here, the muscadines, muscadines. Muscadines. Let me put it here. Yes, I'll show this part. Muscadines. Okay, and right here, it's getting a little yellow right here because of too much rain. This is my elderberry tree. I featured it Tuesday. I'm going to pull that down so you can see it again. Elderberries. They're bigger than they were Tuesday. So I'm going to have to get a big stake and stake this tree up like this because this is my door. And in the fall, I'm going to prune this tree. Actually, elderberries are not trees. They're bushes. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you the trees down this line. I'm going to try to slow down. I'm going to show you the trees down this line that leads all the way to the gazebo. And we're going to start here. This is an apple tree. And it is a dwarf crimson apple tree. And it doesn't have any fruit on it yet. It's only a year old. Next to it is... 
a pear tree. No fruit on it, but it's growing like crazy. I pruned this tree to six feet last year. And then I'm gonna move to right behind me. This is a kefir pear. I'm pretty sure. And it came from Tractor Supply. And this one I've had the third year and it had real bad blight. And I cut this tree off to right here, to about five feet. I'm seeing some rust spots. So I'll probably sp spray with a little antifungal or I might just let it just do its thing. But it has some nice pieces of fruit and they're getting to be a nice size here and there and I'm going to trim this tree and here's a couple of pieces that don't look too hot so they can go okay now I'm going to move on to this tree and it is a crimson crisp I've had it two years and it's in the ground and it's on a dwarf stock and it has some fruit on it let me see if I can focus it Right there. And if we just get two pieces of fruit, hey, that's wonderful. And here is another Stark Brothers apple tree. It's a golden delicious. I've had this one two years. It has no fruit on it. Okay. Now, let's go next to it. Is a Stark Brothers Kinder Crisp with a K. And it has some nice pieces of fruit on it. See, there's two there. There's one here. There's two right there. And I see some little bitty tiny holes. Look like birds or something has been picking with this. So I may put an organza bag on it after I treat it to be on the safe side. Okay. Now... Let's talk about this tree. It is a Rainier cherry. It was chopped down to six feet and it's grown a lot. And then this one over here is a Windsor sweet cherry. This is the one that I repotted into this bigger container. So it, you can see it kind of stalled right here. So I may cut it off. And let me show you this. This is behind me. This is that gala apple tree. And you can see how deformed, or I should say misshapen, uh, these apples look. That's because they have frost damage. But we can cut the bad part out. And here is a fig tree. I thought it died all the way back. But it survived. And it's a Chicago... No. It's a brown turkey fig. I don't see any figs on it yet. Okay. Now, on this row, you can see juicy strawberries, and I companion plant them with onions, and I could just eat this one because it rained today, and I don't use chemicals, and I just yank this one off, so I'm gonna eat it. Mm-hmm, super sweet. Here's some Swiss chard. That's been there for a year. And it's shaded. And that's why it's still growing. A few strawberries. And this is a Sir Magnolia tree. I planted it just to have pollinators in the yard. Now I'm gonna go around the other way and show you what's in the other three go two grow boxes, just like this one. Right here is a a Rona berry tree. And you can see the berries. I showed you, I think, last week, the little white flowers. Let me show you. This is how they come. You see the little white flowers? Where is it? There we go. Then it'll turn into berries. Here's some more white flowers. This one is another cherry tree. Uh, I think it's called Windsor Sweet. I may be wrong. I'll insert the name of the tree. And you can see I put marigolds in a lot of the little containers to keep insects off of them. Between, uh, next to this, is a uh, elderberry bush. 
right here are my youngest son's emergency garden tomatoes. I put names on my plants this is for my baby son. And right here is a Lee Jujube, another tree I only paid $5 for. In my containers, I used, I filled those up with water. And you can see right there, I have a uh, rain catchment. Now, let's go up under the gazebo. Here are black eyed peas, turmeric, comfrey, comfrey, turmeric over there, some flowers and echinacea, tiny Tim tomatoes ripening on the vine over there. Right here, I have some radish, butter crunch lettuce, mustard right there, all the way over in that corner, lettuce. Soursop apples, I'm growing from seed. More mustard I'm giving away. And that tray, I'm gonna plant uh, some kale today and it'll go up here. Another soursop tree over there in the corner. And right here is a, a cold hardy hibiscus. I gathered some of my mother's last uh, baby sister, surviving sister, and I uh, grew her seeds starting last January in my grow room. So that's a tribute to my aunt. Mm-hmm. 10-year-old daylilies. I'm eating strawberries, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's rude. Shampoo ginger. Regular ginger. Regular ginger. I'm waiting to come up. Now, over here, let me go inside here and see if any of these seeds are taking. They're germinating. Yes. We have cherry bell radish right here. Right here, I have dill and spinach, I think. Yeah, I'm going to keep it shaded. It's going to take a long time for the spinach to come up. Okay? But I'm going to keep it under the patio, and that way it'll get shaded, and I'm going to try my best to grow that. Another soursop tree. And I have three containers. I'm going to plant some herbs in here. And over here are beans. Now... Let's go over here, and I'll show you what's in the first three containers. We have golden delicious beets, onions, uh, noble spinach. I don't know the variety of the spinach, but I'm allowing this to go see to seed because I've had it for a year. And then we have some sweet onions. And I see I need some water, even though it's rainy. You still got to water those container plants. These are golden beets and onions. Because of all the drainage holes, the water goes out real quickly. So I'm going to water this when I get finished. Now, I'm still eating strawberries. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. These containers had morning glories in them. Rose is not doing too good. I mean, they have beautiful roses, but they'll bloom again when it starts to get cool. This is my number one raised garden bed. And this is emergency food. And you can see it's loaded with tomatoes and tomato blooms. Can you see that tomato right there? Yes. And I have green beans. And I shared with you in my live on Monday that I really need some more green beans. And I may have to grow more than this. Let me see if you can see this. And they're going to start getting real full. And they're going to grow up all the way up to this trellis and climb over. <coughs> and here are my shade cots. Because it's a little cooler today, I just unclip them and I'll put them up when I need them. Okay, now this is the back of that strawberry container. Right here is butter crunch lettuce and beautiful zinnias. This is that showstopper I told you guys about. Beautiful zinnias, butter crunch lettuce, and onions. And more strawberries and onions now we're at the front of 
pomegranate tree. And you can see more blooms over there and down there. Now, this is garden bed number two. And this is emergency food. These are cucumbers. They're gonna grow up this trellis, go over to the other side and cascade down. Now, let me show you tomatoes. I hope you can see that. Guys, I don't know when I stopped recording. So I hope I didn't let you all miss too much. Mmm, that was delicious. So I'm gonna go back over here because I don't know if you all saw this or not. Isn't that pretty? And I don't know if you saw me gathering all of these. I'm gonna leave these here and I'll come back and get them. Isn't that gorgeous? You guys know I ate the first, <laughs> the first set <laughs> that I harvested. Okay, so now I'm going back around and I'm going to plant something else here with this tomato. Pardon me, this uh, sunflower is spent, but we still have some zinnias growing pretty good in this container and that container right there. And for my new subscribers, people give me owls, my sister, other people, and I bought one or two myself. That deters the bugs. And then I have three stone fruit trees here. I have a dwarf red haven peach and another dwarf red haven peach. And then right over here, I have a sun glow nectarine. It's only two years old and it has two pieces of fruit that I've tied up with an organza bag because I don't want the squirrels to eat them. I'm collecting these roses so that they can dry naturally. And then I'm going to make a uh, skin tonic. Now, let's go over here. Uh, I think I already showed you this compost and this is another rain catchment system i'm gonna make a video i ordered some um bamboo screen and i'm gonna make this look a little bit neater it's supposed to be here tomorrow okay so let's start with this uh, raised bed i have black eyed peas in the container black eyed peas in the container this is Mexican petunia that reseeded itself. I just have them sitting here because I really haven't had the chance to plant them in the ground where I want them to go. And um, right here I have a chichuro pear. No fruit yet, but it did flower, but it didn't make any fruit yet this year. And this is, I believe, is a moon glow pear. And right in front of it, let me go back around. I'll try to do this slowly. Are two pepper plants. This one is almost three years old and it's loaded with fruit. And this one will be, it was a year old in January. And right here is my Miho Satsuma tree. And it's the first year that it's fruiting. It has about 100 pieces of fruit. But every day some of it falls off. So we don't know. But, but the fruit is getting bigger. But see, like this one turning yellow, that's not going to make it. And I see one right here. It fell off already. But it was just hung up in the branches. So we'll get some fruit though. See right here? This isn't going to make it. You can take it off if you want. Or you can let, hold on to it because it's not supposed to start turning ripe until it's time for you to harvest it. So anything that looks yellow 
and those were some more black eyed peas. Anything that looked yellow will fall off. Now, let's go back over here. This is the other brown turkey fig tree, and it had, has figs on it. Now, it always happens I can't find them when I want to find them, so I'm not going to worry about it. This is another tree here, a citrus tree. It's a Calamondin, and it has thorns on them that are very sharp, and that is to protect the fruit. And I read somewhere that when it starts putting on thorns, it may uh, produce fruit that same year. Okay, here's some more of the emergency garden right here. Here are cucumbers, and just some pollinators, two pieces of okra, two okra plants, two okra plants, two okra plants, one or two okra plants, and then the rest of this is just all pollinators. And it started raining, so I didn't get it out to the uh, food forest like I had intended. Here is another elderberry tree that I got for $5 when I got those other ones. Here is a, a native Texas plum tree. Back there is a mulberry tree that's real tall. I heard they go crazy. They can get real tall, and I'm going to let it since it's at the edge of the food forest. And then over there, next to it, is a plum tree. I'm put my finger right there. Now right here are Meyer lemons. And let me show you the fruit. But the crickets and the grasshoppers are devouring the leaves, but people said that's okay. I've had these, this is my third year, and you can see it has a lot of fruit. Over here are my Mexican key limes, and they are loaded. Let me go this way. I think I can get a better look. They are loaded with fruit. There's a couple of bigger ones right here, but it's two of them, and they are loaded with fruit. Now, let me turn around and let you see that these are the totes that I'm getting ready for the sweet potatoes. They have been mailed out. And this is my compost over here. Here is the Costica I showed you a few days ago. Remember I told you we had three and they're gonna start green, getting green as they hit the sun. One, two, three. They're gonna start growing like crazy. And here is my sugar cane. I just grow this so the children, the grandchildren can know where the, the majority of the sugar comes from. Now I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna show you my banana alley. I made a video sharing with you how I winterized it with a mini greenhouse and how I cut the plants down. And at the time when I took the greenhouse off of these, all the plants were no taller than the top bar that you see right there. All of this since March is new growth. And I did something different this year. I did not cut off the leaves like I normally do. The first leaves that come out, I usually whack them off. I didn't do that this year. And that's why you see these real big leaves. Every year you're supposed to learn something more about your gardening. So I got fruit for the first time and I had to pull the fruit before it was ripe because of a impending freeze. So this year I'm getting a head start. Another thing I did differently this year is I didn't cut down the mother plants. Once a banana plant, and they're not trees, once it produces fruit, you could cut that off, but I'm gonna let it dry out more and then cut it off. And after it dries, I would chop it down because once it produces fruit, it will not produce fruit again. I thought I only was gonna have 11 banana plants, but let's count now. Cause I told you, I said, I'm, before I hack something down, I'm gonna give it a couple of months. So I know this one, I didn't think was gonna make it cause it wasn't showing any life. So that's one, two, three, four on the outside, five in the inside, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and all the way on the end, right there, is thirteen. So I'm glad I didn't cut anything down because I have two more pups that made it than I thought was going to make it. And these plants are going to grow to about 14 feet high. The name of the plants are called Musa Orinko, except for this one right here. It was a gift, and you know who you are that gave it to me. It's an ice cream banana. I'm so happy to see that it's, it made it. Let me get the focus. See that green? So that's the indication that's going to make it. And here is a weed. <laughs> And right there is borage that just reseeded itself. Okay, guys. Now I'm in the greenhouse. And you can look at some butter crunch lettuce. The lady's picking it up Thursday. And here are all of my tomatoes and green beans. The tomatoes are going crazy. But I wanted you to see those pretty tomatoes. There we go. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Lots and lots of tomatoes. Let's get that in my hand there. I've been showing you these, so I don't have to show you over and over all of the, t the tomatoes. They are loaded in here. Loaded, loaded, loaded tomatoes. They're all the way up to six, seven feet. Here are the last few trays that I started. They're getting a little dry, but they're still a little damp in some places. These are squash and kale, I believe. And here is Pepper Place. This is all emergency food. This is all gonna be donated. Pepper plants are looking great. And yeah, so that's the end of the tour. All of those marigolds that you see in these two beds were grown from seeds in my grow room inside my home in January. This concludes this video. I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to watch it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and tell your friends about my channel. God loves you and I love you too. Thank you for watching. Bye now. The end.